Hey guys, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. Do really, really appreciate it. Please like, please comment, please keep sharing. But my official podcast where the Dreamers Tea is officially out now. Um, jump online at yktr.com.au forward slash dreamers and cop yourself some merch. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the Q&A show. Roll the intro. Question number one, what New Zealand slash Oz brands apart from yourselves do you look up to in terms of marketing? Um, I feel like we do marketing really, really well. And our principles are built off the back of Gary Vee documenting the journey. And we either entertain or educate. So Chico and Corey, they're really good to watch. They're easy to watch. They're my friends. Like The reason they're my best friend, friends, because they're fucking funny. Like They're just so fun to be around. Our group chat's fun. To, like Our group chat's fun. They're fun to travel with. They're fun to have a beer with and all this sort of stuff as well. But it translates easy over to camera. People always ask me, Dirk and you would have made it if you didn't have NRL players as friends. And when I think about it, if I swapped Chico and Corey for two random NRL players, I don't know if we would be as a success as we are as YKTR. So it's kind of a complex question, but I feel like because those two guys are my friends, like I, I don't pick them out as friends, go, oh, these are my friends because we're going to start a business called YKTR in five years. I feel like they're just easy. They they translate easy over to video camera and they're funny to listen to on podcasts and shit like that. In terms of views, there are highest converting uh, views when the boys are in the podcast. Not sales-wise, but in terms of actual views, they are. And then we go to the other side of education. I feel like I've been able to educate a lot of people in terms of how to start a business, how to start a podcast, how to start a vlog, how to start a clothing company, and everything else in between, just through documenting the journey and being vulnerable. But the question is, t- two other brands I look up to in terms of marketing. One, I Love Ugly from New Zealand, really cool brand. The guy V, super creative. Go follow them. They're sort of doing stuff very similar to us, but in a lot more polished way. Um, aesthetically, their video content, their Instagram, their clothes, a lot cleaner. Just Everything just looks polished, looks cool, looks super creative. And the guy, the owner V, like, I love brands where I know who the founder is, I know who their owner is. So you gave Keith, like Ronnie Fag, Daniel Patrick, Daniel Patrick, um, just stuff like that, like Fear of God, Jerry Lorenzo. I love brands where I know the founder is, and I've been watching him for a little bit because I used to wear their stuff back in the day, and it was like there was sort of the new kids on the block about 08, 09. Watched the keynote he done at AUT. Um, yeah, they're really, really cool. So they do, they've just started a podcast show as well. Uh, their team's reached out to me and going to hit, Ask if he can jump on this podcast as well. So he's a really, really inspiring guy. Super smart. He'd be a lot smarter than I'll ever be in terms of this creating uh, clothing brand side of everything like that. Their brand's a lot more polished than ours is. And that comes with being in the game for 10 years as well. So they document the journey. They got vlogs and stuff as well. A lot cleaner than ours. But um, that's one brand I look up to. I love ugly. Second one, P Nation. Pippa Edwards and Claire, I think her name is. Yeah, they're kind of like my entrepreneurial crush over here. Just the way they do everything. And like I said, I love brands that are built around the founders. Pip Edwards, PE, Pip Edwards, PE Nation. Um, I like their backstory. I like her backstory where she sort of come from, like her old relationship and then work for Sass and Buy, then out of nowhere just started PE Nation with Claire and they've just been able to build this up so quick. And you haven't been able to, you can't like you can't go around the eastern suburbs without seeing a girl with PE Nation on. And just the way they the way that their brand looks, um, it's a unique style. They've got colours that just just work together. It's super, I don't know. I feel like just a really smart brand. I signed up to their email list because I love looking at all their emails and shit like that. So those are probably the two brands I look at to look up to in terms of marketing. I love Ugly from New Zealand and P Nation from over here. Question number two: I have a great paying job, but I don't feel like it's my purpose in life. How do I change? This is a tough question because obviously I don't know your circumstances. I don't know if you have kids. There's a lot of context that you need for this. For me, because like, do you have mortgages? So entrepreneurship's kind of the cool thing right now. And it's in your face. It's on Instagram. It's everywhere. Like I'm pumping out so much content. So like people see it and they go, oh, that's easy. Like I'll start a vlog tomorrow. I'll start a podcast tomorrow. I'll start a business tomorrow. I'll start a clothing company tomorrow. So it kind of like it kind of looks a lot better than what it actually is on Instagram and all that sort of thing. So people see it and they're like, fuck, I can do that too. And maybe you can. I don't know what your circumstances are, but what I would suggest is you got to be, you got to realise everything in life has an opportunity cost. If I don't come to work today, I'm potentially stopping our business from growing and branding and potentially getting cash flow into the company. You know what I mean? If I 
go on holiday for a week, does that affect our business? And it does. Like in terms of my content isn't as good when I'm not in the office. And we've got metrics that show that. And Natasha, she's also on my case. Like when I'm away or if I'm hungover, like it doesn't necessarily convert into sales. So everything in life has an opportunity cost. If you're going to leave your high paying job to pursue this entre- entrepreneurship, you just got to understand that you're leaving a high paying job to fucking probably struggle for the next two years. Are you willing to sit through that? And that's all it is. It's just a game of opportunity cost. Am I willing to give up this comfort of a salary knowing when my pay is going to come in to go in over here and go, oh shit, is this going to work? But what I would suggest is side hustling. Side hustling is the key so you can pivot 18 months in life. I side hustle all the time. My podcast is a side hustle. I don't get paid for this podcast, but I love to do it. This is kind of my side hustle. Um, but YKTR is running my main thing. I've got YKTR Media over here working in this like little bracket over here as well. So Side hustling is the way to do it. Gary Vee talks about what are you doing from 7 to 1 in the morning? And that's the way you allow yourself to pivot. Don't just quit your job and go, I'm going to start a clothing company tomorrow because this is my new passion, this is my new, th- new thing. And I read a book last night and it said it talked about the gut feeling of, and it's sort of a gut feeling that you can't sh- shake. So I was in a high paying job playing NRL. Like I wasn't obviously on big money like the, big bo- the, the boys are. But... I just had this itch that I couldn't get rid of. Like I wanted to leave football and start something. And I didn't know it was YKTR, but I knew I just wanted to do something else. I knew football wasn't it. And I just couldn't shake the feeling. Same as like the podcasting. I just could not shake this feeling that I wanted to start a podcast. I felt like no one was doing it as well in Australia. I feel like I could I could do it a little bit better. Is that a little bit of variance maybe? Um YKTR media. I was sitting on the plane coming back from Nan's funeral and going, fuck, I'm just gonna start this thing. Fuck it hired someone like two days later and like been going for two weeks and I had that feeling for about two weeks where I, I kept talking about it on podcasts I'm like why can't you like media needs to change I'm just sitting here talking shit on the podcast like go do something about it you know what I mean so and that was an itch I couldn't scratch as well oh that yeah that was an itch that I needed to scratch as well so if you have this genuine gut feeling that you can't fucking get rid of I feel like entrepreneurship's for you but you just got to realize you're giving up you can't you can't have your cake and eat it too so Side hustle, side hustle, that's the way to do it. Three, how important is vulnerability to any entrepreneur? I feel like vulnerability is important to not entrepreneurs, but humans, um, full stop. And what I mean by that, so I feel like people relate to me because they've seen me from day dot, like when I didn't have money, when I was shipping clothes out of my house, when like almost had to sell my house because I didn't have any money. Um, getting our first office, fucking up plenty of orders, fucking up plenty of times and putting it on camera. I feel like that was, that's what makes me relatable. And I feel like vulnerability is a strength because it makes you relatable. Like people are like, oh shit, he's like me. Where we look at successful pe- people right now, say, if, say we looked at Mark Zuckerberg and he was talking about success and business and we we're just going, oh, easy for you, you got Facebook, your company's worth billions of dollars. Where if you document your journey from day dot, people can like, they got something to attach themselves to. Something to, like people get attached to like, seri- like game things of like Games of Thrones. Because they've able to been able to track the journey over a long period of time. You think of a movie, a movie's only about two hours long. So you kind of have to fall in love with the character like within the first 20, 30 minutes. But if you think of like a Netflix series and that goes for eight seasons, you get attached to characters because you've been able to drag it over across many years, across a long time. And that's kind of what vlogging has done for us or me personally. They've able they've been able to see me from day dot. And I just feel like being vulnerable and being honest as a person and own up to your mistakes. It's just being a human being 101. Not only is vulnerability important for any entrepreneur, I feel like it's important for any man, any woman, any child, any sports star, that's an important one. Any person, like, it shouldn't be, vulnerability shouldn't be like this, like, it should almost be common practice. Like, if you're struggling, if you're fucked up, you should be the first person to go, yep, that's on me, I'm sorry, um, how can I fix this? Or I'm gonna do this to fix this. Or in terms of mental health, hey bro, I'm struggling, I'm feeling depressed, bro, can you help me? And I know I feel like vulnerability should be made cool, like fucking today. And that's the reason why I resonate with Gary Vee so much, and that's why people resonate with me because I'm vulnerable. Like, like I'm confident in everything I do, but when I fuck up, I'll be the first one to say it. And you know what the best thing about being vulnerable is? It takes a fucking massive weight off your shoulders. Like once you say something, like you know, you know if you're fucked up, and if you own up to it, it's just a weight off your shoulders. When you go into hiding and you let other people speculate on different things that you've done, then it starts to weigh down and then weigh down in a and it gets fucking very, very heavy. So I felt like being vulnerable is the best way. And I've talked about the eight mile effect before. 
Um, if you've watched Eminem, watch the Eight Mile Effect, and uh, if you watch the movie Eight Mile, watch the last battle of Eminem, and he it's a rap battle when they're going against each other, and all he does is take the piss out of himself, like. And then once you know exactly who you are, self-aware, you know what your flaws are, you know what your mistakes are, and you put your hand up and go, yep, this is me, this is me over here, no one can really touch you because you already know. <laughs> if someone says something about you, like, yeah, I already know. So vulnerability is cool. Be vulnerable.